Well, they say first impressions are everything. We call that the primacy effect, and let's be honest, this is a pretty weird one. Uh, welcome to Common Thousand. My name is Professor Steve Stefano, uh, and we're going to spend the rest of the spring semester covering this field of communication. But since we have a pretty packed schedule, I wanted to give you the syllabus day rundown now so that you know what's going on and are prepared to walk into your discussion sections on Friday. So we'll call this our digital syllabus day, and my hope is that this YouTube video won't last much more than 15 minutes. Here's a hint. Turn up the speed on the playback if you need to get through it more quickly. I'll sound a little higher pitched, but you'll get the material faster. So COM 1000 covers a number of the building blocks of the field of communication. And for a lot of people, they never really thought about taking a course in communication, let alone studying an entire field of communication. And I'm going to spend the vast majority of this semester trying to convince you that you should. Uh, not everybody's going to be a COM major, and, and not everybody should be a COM major or minor. But being capable of understanding analyzing, making sense of, and then appropriately using the communication in our world from you to your family members, you to your friends, you to your coworkers, and from the media to you, and when it comes to social media, from you back into those media platforms, that really is the building blocks of a good and useful and meaningful life. If you're looking in a company, uh, the person who is good at their job and fairly capable of communicating will usually get passed over by the person who is good at their job and excellent at communicating. And that alone is a reason to study this a little bit more deeply. Plus, we all have complicated relationships. We all have complicated life stories. We all have drama. And understanding how those things come about and the different theories and, and frameworks that we use to make sense of them and improve our interactions going forward can really improve our lives. So we're going to focus on a lot of that stuff. And towards the end, we'll put a particular emphasis on technology and media in today's world and trying to make you a better professional communicator, which should give you some skills that will help you in whatever your field. I don't care if you're from STEM. I don't care if you're from the creative arts, whether you're from journalism, business, you name it. I think this course has something to offer you, and I will spend the next 14 weeks of my life trying to convince you of that through our lectures and our activities and assignments. So who am I? This picture was taken in 2006 when I got here, and I immediately broke the rules and stood on the seal. Uh, so like I said, my name is Steve Stefano. I was a master's student. I got into the master's program here in the Department of Communication at the University of Connecticut back when in 2006. I was 22 years old at the time, uh, and the world was my oyster all the way down to those horrible flip-flops. Once that... Uh, process happened. I really did enjoy doing the master's degree in communication and learning more about the field. Uh, I then decided I wanted to stick with it. So I got my PhD here at UConn. Uh, and then I went out on the job market to find a job and I got a job at my alma mater, the University of Rhode Island. So it was a weird experience for me because I went back to the place where I got my bachelor's degree and was now a college professor. And I was only about 27 at the time. So it was really weird to talk to students who were taking the courses with the instructors that I had taken five years before. Then a few years went by and an opportunity arose to come over to the University of Connecticut and take over our research methods program. Uh, which is a required course in the department. And I did that, but about halfway through my first semester of doing that, uh, we lost the instructor who was teaching COM 1000 at the time. And myself and a colleague of mine were asked to fill in. And then in the following spring semester, I was basically told, hey, this is your course now. Uh, so that's a big part of the work I do here, uh, is teaching this introductory communication course and keeping everything running with it. I also run our department's production sequence program, uh, which is something where we work on multimedia creation, filmmaking, documentary, narrative films, etc. And I do that in large part because I'm also an independent filmmaker. I've worked on three different feature-length films uh, of my own, uh, the most recent of which was actually part of my dissertation project to get my PhD. Uh, beyond that, I'm a huge sports fan and a huge football fan. Uh, I love the creative arts. I love music, uh, you name it, etc. I also try to keep up with my pop culture, so I expect you to tell me if my references are outdated or ridiculous. Okay, so our required materials for this course, pretty simple. You need the COM 1000 custom textbook. We've been using it for a couple years, so there should be used copies available if you want to save some money. Uh, you need to be on Husky CT. That's where everything runs in the course. I need you to communicate with your teaching assistant and maybe eventually with myself through your UConn email address. And I need you to have a number two pencil on exam days because we do use Scantron. There are over 700 students in this course across two lecture sections. So we try our best to keep everything official. I want to warn you now, a lot of the policies and procedures that we have are because there are so many students and we're trying to keep things straight for everybody. 
Okay, so this is the part that everybody seems to flip through in their course syllabus. So you get the syllabus, you go right down to this, the, the grade scale, sort of what do I need to do and, and what is it going to take to get through this course? Well, it's a lot uh, in COM 1000, but they're all small pieces, and we do have 14 weeks to get through it all. You got three exams. You got four quizzes. You got five what we call discussion challenges, which are activities you'll do on Fridays in your discussion. You've got two very short papers to write reflecting on podcasts that we'll make available to you. You've got two creative projects, which are both pretty small in their own right, but should be fun. And you're going to do five hours of participation in research over the course of the semester. And when you add all that up, you get 1,000 points. So we like to call it the COM 1000. Uh, let's talk about the exams briefly. We're going to break this course into three pieces. Uh, we'll talk about those pieces in a minute, but after each of the pieces, you're going to take an exam. The first exam is worth 150 points. The second exam is worth 150 points. And the third exam, which is the final exam, is worth 250 points. And that one will be a little bit cumulative with the main focus of the exam on the final third of the course. Exams will be pretty much multiple choice. Uh, you're looking at uh, about five points a question, sometimes four points a question based on how we map it out. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. We'll give you plenty of advance notice on them. We'll review for them, and we'll talk to you about what you should be expecting on each exam. Quizzes take place either in discussion or in lecture. I'll give you a hint. They often take place in your discussion section. Uh, quizzes are 25 points apiece. They are not announced. Uh, the expectation, of course, is that you will be present for each discussion meeting. And uh, quizzes go through the material that's been covered in the last lecture or two, sometimes last three lectures up until that quiz. Uh, multiple choice questions, usually on the big items that we think are really important from the lecture. So the expectation is that you'll be able to do at least fairly well, if not perfectly, uh, by knowing what the major stuff we've been covering in lecture is. So you'll do four of those worth 100 points. Discussion challenges. So. One of the ways that we try to make this course more engaging is by putting you into real world or realistic communication dilemmas or scenarios. Uh, we work in groups on these in discussion and they're called discussion challenges. Each one is worth 10 points uh, and the way it works is simple. We give you a communication problem, you and your group kick it around kind of like a reality TV challenge and come up with a solution. Each group presents their solutions to the class and at the end the groups are awarded based on how good or effective their solutions would be. Uh, full credit is 10 out of 10. Uh, if you do a decent job on it, you should expect to get at least an 8 out of 10. So the expectation there is that if you're present on discussion challenge days, you should get most of the points and if you come up with a really good solution to the problem put before you, you'll get all of the points. Uh, podcast reflections. So throughout the semester, we'll make available two uh, different assignments based on our course podcast, which is called Compendium. In Compendium, I sit down kind of like this format right here, but I interview different members of our department uh, about the research they do, why they do it, what's interesting about it, and where they see it going in the future. So you, all you have to do for each reflection paper is pick one of the episodes that's been made available, listen to it, and then follow the document that we've put up on your discussion sections, Husky CT, that tells you how to write a reflection paper. It's pretty much a summary of the podcast, followed by some interesting things that you found in the podcast, some communication-based questions that arose for you, and then your personal impressions of what you liked or disliked about that podcast. For each of those, they're worth 50 points. There's a rubric that breaks down how they're assessed. Uh, one is due about midway through the semester. The other is due towards the very end of the semester. So you'll do two of them, 50 points apiece for 100 points. Uh, creative projects. Uh, at two different points in the semester, we'll do a creative project because one piece of communication is the ability to express yourself creatively. If you think about our world now, there are so many people posting photos and videos and, and works of uh, art or creativity, even through simple kind of silly apps sometimes. I mean, I've seen people draw really weird, elaborate things on Snapchat before, for example. Uh, the first creative project is a photography project. We call it 1,000 Words. In 1,000 Words, you're going to take two photos uh, that describe or exhibit your Yukon experience. Uh, and then, then you're going to caption those photos and give us a paragraph about why you find those photos meaningful and what those photos communicate based on what's in the picture. We'll cover it in more detail when the time comes. Uh, towards the end of the semester, you'll work in teams on what we call Brevity. Brevity is a short film project. It's worth 50 points. Uh, you're going to make a 15-second film with your teammates. It can be one shot taken on an iPhone, or it can be really elaborate, which some students do. But just know that the expectation is you don't have to have ever made a film or any kind of multimedia project before to be able to do well on the assignment. Uh, it's more an ability to kind of get your feet wet using those technologies and teach you sort of how to tell a story 
in a compelling way in a short frame of time, which if you think about it, is a lot like what we're doing on our Instagrams and our Snapchats and whatnot. So creative projects are there to show your ability to show range and they're worth about 100 points or 10% of the course grade. We'll get into both of those projects when the time comes. Uh, research participation. So the course is part of a research participant pool in the Department of Communication, which means that over the period of the class, different studies will be made available to you to participate in. A lot of the studies take place online. Some of the studies are just labs where you have to go and visit a specific room, usually in Arjona where our department is held. Uh, and when you go participate in those, you get credit based on how much time they take. Oftentimes they're worth about 30 minutes, some are, some are worth 15, others are worth an hour. Long story short, throughout the semester a bunch of these will be made available to you and the expectation is that you will complete five hours worth of research and once you do that you'll get all 100 points. Each hour is worth 20 points of research. Uh, you can't go over the 100 point maximum. You can do as many studies as you want if you're interested, but you just have to earn up to 100 points of research participation as the semester goes. We'll be sure to point this back out once research studies become available to you. Let's talk a little bit about the course schedule. As I mentioned before, three parts to the course schedule. The first part is the foundations of communication. We're going to talk about all the basic nuts and bolts of how we study communication and why we study it in the ways that we do. And we're going to talk about some of the key pieces of how humans communicate with each other and how those key pieces come from, in some places, our upbringing, in other places, our culture, and in other circumstances, even the media around us. In part two, we'll talk about interpersonal communication, the complex and sometimes stressful and anxiety inducing interactions we have with one another. This can be our friendships, our family relationships, our romantic relationships, which we spend a decent amount of time on, uh, our working groups, our dealing with conflict, you name it. Uh, and then in part three, we'll broaden things a little bit and look at the influence of media and mass communication on us as a society and us as individuals. Uh, that part of the course, we get a lot more technical. We start talking about things like mass communication, mass media, uh, the effects of, say, video game violence, social media, etc. And all of these really do a solid job summarizing the field of communication. Uh, and we'll get into that a bit more as the time approaches. Uh, as far as the course goes, some nuts and bolts about how the policies work. Those are my office hours you see there. They're also listed in the syllabus. Uh, they're all by appointment because with 700 students, it's really hard for me to keep track of people stopping in and it often creates a bad situation if we don't keep appointments because there's a huge line out the door and we can't get to everybody. Uh, as far as email policies, uh, I want to make this clear, your teaching assistant is your number one resource in this course. And the reason for that is because the way we run the course, your TA on Fridays is also the person that's going to do all the grading of your assignments and your work. They're going to be the one to interact with you and help you deal with problems and sort through things. Uh, I give them as much control over their grading and work as possible, and the expectation is then they know you. I've got 700 students in the course, and while I would love to sit down and talk to each one of you, it's just not realistically possible. And we can blame the university structure for that, but frankly, it is what it is. Uh, so my goal here is that you communicate with your TA first and foremost about any questions that you have. Uh, the TAs talk to me all the time. They're in touch with me on a regular basis, and anytime they can't answer your question, they usually come to me and say, Steve, what do you think about this? And then I give them some guidance or I reach out to you directly. What that means is if you're going to email with questions or comments or curiosities related to assignments or work or something being late or you name it, the only emails that you should send to me are ones where you've already dealt with something with your TA and you don't really like what they have to say or you don't feel like you got an adequate answer. And then you can schedule an appointment to sit down with me and we can go ahead and talk about it further. That's also one of the ways in which we dispute grades if you're frustrated with a grade that you get on an assignment. I want to make clear, if you want to talk to me about the field or you've got a general question or something that you think would stand out in lecture or whatnot, feel free to send that my way. I'm not saying I don't want to talk to you. I do. I'm just saying that the easiest way to communicate about problems you're having in the course with your assignments and your performance and whatnot is to talk to your teaching assistant first and foremost. And then once that has been exhausted, if that doesn't work for you, you are more than welcome to come talk to me and we'll sit down and figure it out. Okay, so what do you need to do in this course? I need you to stay up to date with Husky CT and your email. We will be very organized through Husky CT at all times. We will communicate with announcements and messages and whatnot. Be sure to attend lecture regularly. I'm going to promise you something, and I'll tell you this again on Monday when I see you in person. I am going to do everything in my power to make this lecture 
the most interesting lecture it can possibly be. I sat through a lot of boring lectures in my day uh, in undergrad, and I remember feeling miserable in them. I'm not going to read off of slides. I'm not going to stand there and speak in a monotone voice. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you engaged in this course. So I hope you'll attend regularly uh, so that we can cover as much material as possible and you can stay up to date with what's going on. Uh, third, with such a large course with so many students, we ask that you submit your work on time. There's a very clear late work policy in the syllabus. I want you to read it carefully. If you turn something in less than 24 hours after the deadline, you'll lose 15 points, but it will be graded. After that, we can't accept it. Uh, and on a regular basis, you need to attend discussion on Fridays, and that's because the discussion challenges and the quizzes typically take place in discussion. So you can only get credit for them if you're there to participate, which reminds me, Meeting your teaching assistant is probably the most important thing you can do this week uh, outside of reading the syllabus and getting caught up with what we're doing here. So make sure you attend discussion on Friday. Uh, a little bit, just a brief summary on how we work through grade disputes in this class. Uh, we have a 24-7 policy in the course, which means if a grade is posted, we ask you to wait 24 hours before you go ahead and contact the TA. The reason for that is because we're often fired up and your TAs are often exhausted right after they get done grading everything. It's a bad time for everybody to talk about it. So give it 24 hours, let it marinate a little bit, and then after that, go ahead and reach out to them. Uh, give your TAs about 48 hours for a response, 72 hours if it's over the weekend. And at that point, if you haven't reached out within a week of getting the grade back, we consider the grade to be final. So we want to address any disputes or problems within a week of the assignment coming back. Your TAs will always email you when a new grade has been posted. That way you'll know that the clock is starting on that 24-7 policy. Um, we don't consider grade disputes at the end of the semester, and we don't think it's fair for students to come back at the end and beg for additional points that they didn't earn. It's really unfair to classmates. So we'll remind you about that at the end of the semester, but I really have to insist on this because the course is so large and, and with so many moving parts. Please be uh, appropriate with regard to the grade disputes policy. Follow up with your teaching assistants within a reasonable time frame, um, and then uh, you shouldn't have any issues with that. And if you don't like what your teaching assistant has to say about a grade, that's when you would approach me, and we'd set up a meeting to talk about it as well. Okay, uh, civility, as far as the lecture goes, I keep it very simple. We're not going to have 100 rules about whether or not you enter late and whether your cell phone's on and if you have a laptop open or whatnot. Put it simply, uh, you have tuition dollars that you paid to be here. I respect that. I think it's important. I consider this an adult learning environment, which means we will be mature. Sometimes we will cover sensitive topics. We will try to treat everybody in the room like adults at all times. And I hope that if you'll do your part with that, I will certainly do mine. Okay. So I really encourage all of us to just carry on like adults, which means if you've got a phone call, please step out of the room to take it. Uh, if you have a laptop and something going on, please don't do anything on it that's distracting to others. I understand if you open Facebook to check something or whatnot, but try not to distract other people. If you've got something to say to somebody nearby you in the lecture, go ahead and say it quietly, but try not to carry on a whole conversation that stops other people from paying attention. Keep it simple. We'll try and all be adults, and I don't think we'll have any problems. Okay. What do you need to do next? Read that course syllabus. There's a course contract at the end of it that says that you have read and understand the policies of the course. We expect and require that you will sign that contract and return it to your teaching assistant by next Friday's discussion, which is January 26th. So make sure you've done that. Second, be sure to attend your discussion section on Friday. That's where you're going to meet your TA. You can give them your signed course contract if you've already read through it and are familiar with everything and comfortable with it. Um, and be sure to ask any questions you may have about the course. I'm sure some will pop up given that we didn't get to meet in person today. And also stay tuned for more updates. But I will see you in real life on Monday. Monday should be the 22nd of January. I will be there. I hope you will be there. We'll do a little more of the introductory stuff and we'll jump into unit one and get this course started. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me on your snowy, hopefully relaxing snow day of syllabus day. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to this course. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks so much for listening. See you soon.